Hello, good morning Spring Mill families. Miss Mayfield here to read you another story. This one today I think is super fitting for everything going on right now because even though we're not in the classroom, we are still learning every single day and so I thought it would be helpful if we read Your Fantastic Elastic Brain. Stretch it and shape it. This is written by Joanne Deek, PhD, and it's illustrated by Sarah Ackerley. So I hope you enjoy the story and learning about what your brain can do just as much as I did when I read it for the first time. Let's go ahead and get into it. And if you want to pay attention to the little mouse and the little owl on the sides of the pages when I'm reading, they're hidden everywhere. Like this one here says, an average person's short-term memory holds seven digits at a time. And the mouse says, I think I can remember that number. Do you think you can remember that number until the end of the story? All right, read it, and let's see if you remember it when I'm all done. Your fantastic elastic brain. What does your brain really do? Does it fill the space between your ears? Hello there. All I see is pink stuff. Well, yeah, but your brain can do so much more. Your brain helps you think and remember and name what you see and what you hear. It lets you move your body and feel both touch and emotions. Your brain does all the things that make you, you. Like how you like certain foods, your favorite word, maybe it's elbow. If you become a ping pong champion, knowing about global landmarks, being a good scientist, or enjoy reading books. That's one of my favorites. So what is your brain? Is it a muscle? No, your brain is an organ in your body. It's made up of cells and tissue. The brain controls everything you do, everything you think, everything you feel, and even everything you dream. The brain also has many parts that do all kinds of different jobs. There is the cerebrum, the hippocampus, the prefrontal cortex, the tiny amygdala, and the cerebellum. Whoa! That pink stuff is busy. Let's see, the first one right here is the cerebrum. And the cerebrum is the largest part of your brain. It helps you think and speak. The cerebellum is a small part in the back of the brain that helps your muscles to coordinate your movement and your balance so that you can walk, ride a bike, or play tag. I didn't know that. The prefrontal cortex, which is right here in the front of your brain, is the part of your brain behind your forehead and it lets you make plans and decisions. The hippocampus is in the center of your brain and it works like a filing cabinet to help you store and file memories. The amygdala is a tightly packed group of cells deep within the center of your brain that controls your emotion. Just like all of these emotions, excited, angry, embarrassed, frightened, sad, and happy. Then there are neurons. Neurons are everywhere in your brain. They are tiny brain cells that make electrical signals to send messages to each other and other cells in your body telling them what to do. When you were born, you were very little. Your brain was small and not so strong. But as you get older, your body grows and gets stronger. As part of your body, your brain grows and learns to do new things too. And you can make your brain do even more. Your brain grows very fast during the first 10 years of your life. This is the magic decade when you can help your brain grow faster and to be more powerful. Just like lifting weights helps your muscles get stronger, learning new things strengthens your brain. You can give your brain a good workout by trying to learn as many different things as you can. 
just like elastic bands that stretch when you pull them, even things that are hard at first or that you don't like to do or that you don't do very well get easier every time you keep trying. Think about the first time you played soccer. You probably couldn't kick the ball very far or make many goals, but as you kept going to practices, you learned more about the rules in the game and followed your coaches or your teacher's directions. The muscles in your legs and feet got stronger and your movements were more coordinated and you could run further and faster. Learning more and practicing what you learned let you play better and have more fun. Practice really does make perfect, or at least much, much better. You can stretch the part of your brain that controls your feelings too. If you are frightened, which means scared, about taking a risk like learning to swim, finding the courage to put your face in the water, stretches your amygdala and it will remind you that you overcame your fear. So you will be braver the next time you do something that scares you, like diving into the water. And look, they gave him a 10. He did such a good job. Learning something new causes the brain to grow more connections among the neurons. With more connections, the neurons can send and receive more messages. These connections help to stretch a part of your brain and make it more elastic so that it can hold more information and more ideas. How does the brain stretch and grow? Well, let's think about it. Neuro means that the word it is a part of has something to do with the brain. And a sculptor molds, shapes, or carves things out of clay or wood or stone. So you shape your brain when you make it bigger by adding new things you know and can do. You are a neurosculptor. Did you know that? You are a neurosculptor. When you learn something new, you're building on what you have already learned. In the same way that the muscles in your body work together when you want to lift a heavy object or kick a ball, the different parts of your brain work together when you're learning something new. The amygdala makes you want to learn to play the piano. The cerebrum helps you decide to practice. The cerebellum calls up to the memory of watching and listening when your piano teacher showed you how to play a new piece of music. Then it sends a message through neurons to the muscles in your wrists, hands, and fingers so that you can play the right notes. The next time you play that piece of music, the parts of your brain and body will know how to work together and you will play the song more easily. That makes sense. The brain that makes you, you, really is an amazing organ. It controls what you think, do, feel, and remember. Your brain is growing very fast your first 10 years of life, and now we know that you can help it grow. When you try hard to learn something new, connections grow from neurons and attach to other neurons. Then, your brain sends a message faster, making part of your brain bigger and stronger. Making mistakes really helps you learn because your brain keeps trying new things and stretching out until you figure out the answer to your problem. You are shaping more elastic brains when you learn new things that build on what you already know. The more difficult kinds of things you learn and think about, the more you can learn, know, and enjoy. The harder you try without giving up, the more you will learn. You really can train your brain to be fit and strong and to keep stretching and growing throughout your whole life. The end. Do you remember the number at the beginning of the story? It had seven digits in it. Let's see. Did you get it right? Wow, the brain is an amazing organ, isn't it? And this is why even when we're at home, when we're with family, when we're with friends, when we're at school, when we're out getting groceries, wherever we are, we are constantly practicing and growing our brains so that things get easier with time. Thanks for listening today and I hope you enjoy the other stories on our YouTube channel. Have a great day.